How you doing? Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to pull the front wheel off my Dyna. Um, this is one of those problems or tasks you're going to have to take on if you have to take your wheel in loose, if you get new tires. A lot of shops won't work on older bikes, or you can save yourself some, a lot of money by just pulling the wheel off yourself and taking the wheel and tire in loose uh, to have the shop mount and balance it. Plus, there might be some other projects involved, wheel bearings or brakes or something like that, or replacing rotors where you have to do a step like this. So, it's pretty easy. Um, basic hand tools, uh, with the exception of you know, maybe a jack or two, um, and a little creativity with balancing the bike with a front wheel on it. Uh, try to run through all that. And, um, yeah, let's get to it. All right, one of the hardest things people have to conquer is getting the wheel off uh, without, you know, obviously dropping the bike. <clears throat> So I happen to have a big crash bar on here. Um, what you can also do is use car jack stands under the foot peg mounts um, back here. Uh, it's really kind of a case of whatever works for you. Uh, what I'm going to do is I have the jack stands here. I have a little bowel jack here, so I'm going to loosen them up. I do have on ratchet straps, but they aren't very tight. So hopefully it will tighten up against the ratchet straps. I'll be able to jack it up a little bit and keep clicking the jack stands up on the way up and uh, I only got to get up enough that I can get the front wheel or the front tire just enough off the ground so shouldn't have to go too far so here we go alright one of the next things we're going to do is take the brake calipers off it's 12 point socket 12 point whew, 10 millimeter whoop. 12 point, uh, that's if you have 08 and up bagger 12 point bolts on this thing. This is not a stock brake setup, but still, still mounts on the same way. So, loosen up both bolts, pull your bolts out. Ta da! and go around the other side. All right, we're over here on the right side of the bike and there's an axle clamp here. It's a bolt that runs all the way through there. You'll see the nut right there on this side. So, on this bike, it's a 9 16 wrench on there. And a 5 16 Allen wrench. Whoops, sorry. 5 16 Allen wrench right down in there. We'll back it on up here. Sorry about the shakiness. Pearl cameraman, I am not. But I'm getting better. There's that. So, really, just break that free. Now you don't take this bolt completely all the way out because it's just squeezing on the uh, bottom of the fork right here. So, just back that off, loosen it up. When you're done, take your Allen wrench, slide through there. You're going to need it. Over here on the right side, you're a three quarter inch wrench. Gonna take this nut off right here. It's three core. That Allen wrench I told you to leave in that hole in the axle. You're gonna hold on to the axle with your left hand with that. Take this, break her on free. Back that nut all the way off. Now there's some washers and spacers on here. You're gonna want to keep this stuff in order. You can get it off of your fingernails there. So you're going to keep all these in order, because when you put it back on, especially the spacers in here, it's very important. Now, you should be able to scoot the axle back and forth, and it'll start walking its way out. If for some reason it gets stuck, you can take a punch, key point, a punch that is smaller than this hole here. Smaller than that hole. And that way you can hit it. Whoop, there we are. Hit it inside there. You do not want to hit the outer part, you'll damage the threads. You'll never get the axle nut back on without having to sit there for hours and hours and file down the threads. But, should be able to grab the Allen wrench, pull on it, hold your wheel up in place. First spacer's loose right here. There's a spacer. Pull the axle some more. There's another spacer over on the right side that just hit the floor. Spacer. I'm not going to put, normally you can store this stuff back on the axle, but the spacer's dirty, so clean the spacer off, put it back on the axle, thread your nut on to keep track of everything. We're just going to lay it out here on the, uh, on the lift. 
All right, from there, your axle's out. Everything's in a safe spot. From there, just roll your tire on out. Should hopefully clear the fender up top there. And there you have it. You ready to take the wheel into the shop, uh, give them a new tire or whatever, or buy a tire from them or whatever you choose. Personally, I buy them online because it's cheaper. And uh, yeah, good to go. Got a new tire mount on here. Uh, now you'll notice before you put the thing back on, there are rotational arrows. Hopefully you can see that there. Uh, and it's a big arrow. Come on, there we are. Whoop, there we are. Front use only, rotate that way. Make sure when you put it back in, that's the direction the wheel is going to rotate. So just reversing the process here. Slider back in. Should barely fit through the fender bolts if you're running stock size. Chew the flies out of the way. Now you're going to want to, I'm going to wipe this axle clean here. And uh, along the wipe all the spacers clean. Remember I got some dirt on the spacers. And uh, then I'm going to re-grease everything up. And uh, then we'll flip over the other side and start the reassembly process. All right, just got some general purpose automotive industrial grease here. So I'm going to take a little bit of dab of that on my finger. Make sure your fingers are clean so you don't pollute your grease. And just put the faintest little film on here. Help the whole reassembly process. And uh, then eventually disassembly process down the road. And we're going to take our first little washer here. A little bead on each side because be up next and close to things are spinning so a little grease won't hurt oh man all right so got our axle here we're just going to start it in there and hopefully you can see that I'm just going to kind of hold the spacer in there from the bottom roll it there until it lines up you should be able to hook the tire with your hand like so and lift up. And from there, it should slide in quite a ways. And we'll put it in all the way yet because remember, you got a spacer on the other side. The other side's tricky. All right. I'm going to position that so you can see it right down here. Now, got our spacer. Paint a little film of grease on the maiden surfaces on the bore. We're going to back the axle out a little bit there. Slide the spacer up in there. You'll probably have to grab the wheel a little bit and rock it around a little. Now there's a lot of different little diameters on the uh, axle. So you don't want to just go hammering it right back in there. You have to kind of wiggle around because it gets to each step you're going to have to move it up and over. So just kind of keep wiggling the thing around here. You'll feel everything kind of pop into place. Take your Allen wrench from before. Slide it back into your hole in the axle. And work it back and forth. Kind of wiggle the wheel. Should get you right about there. And we're hitting something. And then sometimes it might just get a little tight. So, grab one up. Now here you could use a soft face hammer, a rubber mallet, or something to hit that with. Hit the axle with. Let's say the only thing you got is a ball peen hammer or a claw hammer. Take a rag, hang that over the uh, head of the axle there so you don't mar it up. And then you can just give it a little tap. And I'll keep from marring the face up. You can see there where the axle is popping through. Now once you get it through enough, you can put your washer back on there. And then you can take your axle nut thread it back on there. And uh, you can use the axle nut to draw the axle the rest of the way in. Now just make sure at least you got at least three or four threads grabbed on there before you start cranking on it so you don't strip out the threads. So take a three quarter inch wrench. Run that sucker all the way in. 
Now as it gets close, once again, your axle will start spinning. So take your Allen wrench from before, or whatever you have, and just hold it in place with your left hand and crank it down. Crank it down to your torque specs, which I'd have to look up in the axle or the manual what it is. But crank it down right to those torque specs, because you don't want to have it too loose, because that's what kind of squeezes this whole assembly together and keeps everything in line. Squeezes your bearings, your spade, your backspace, and all that. Keeps your axle or your wheel from walking back and forth in there. Um, right down here, remember these two bolts here? Let's move this down here. You got these two bolts here, that one bolt, so you got your Allen wrench here, and then your you know, 916 wrench. And just snug this up, or tighten it up, I'm sorry. That will help keep all that locked into place. Give her a spin, make sure everything spins as it should. Alright, so once again here, we have our caliper. Make sure the pads are pushed back so you have that gap there. You can see you still got good brake pads, good time to check that out. Slide that right over top of your rotor there. Start in a bolt. And start in the bottom bolt. You want to make sure you run these down in there evenly. Run them both in all the way with your fingers first. And snug them up evenly. Then torque them down. Because uh, otherwise you cock one of them. And then uh, it might pop free or something later on and uh, your brake bolts could back off and that would be very bad so from there get your wrench and your socket and your torque wrench and all that and tighten them down tighten them back down to manufacturer's specs which is pretty tight they're your front brakes all right before we get done here one more thing I like to do to my uh, bolts, that way I can walk around and you know check make sure everything's good like at gas stops or rest stations or whenever, or in the morning before I take it for a ride. I take a little black magic marker here, I put a little dot on each one at 12 o'clock. We'll even do it down here. It's a very subtle little thing, but the idea is, you know, these are important bolts, they're your front brakes. So the idea is I can do walk around this thing in the morning or at a gas station, let me zoom in there and hopefully it'll focus. There you can see the dots. And that way I know if any of these dots are at a different location other than 12 o'clock, hey, that bolt's backing out and I got problems. I need to address that ASAP. That's all we got. From there, take it off the jack and uh, go take it for a test ride. Remember, new tires have an oil film on them, so they're going to be slick for at least the first 100 miles, so don't go like a maniac out of your driveway. But uh, just take them out, ride around, scuff them in, be good to go. That's all I got.